In the last part, we have found out a relation between strain rate, stress and temperature. And in general, we can write strain rate related to stress through stress exponent and with temperature through kind of an RNS relation. We have seen in diffusion creep, diffusion can occur through grain boundaries as well as through lattice. And that depends on what is the grain size of a material. In general, experimentally, it has been observed that the strain rate or creep rate is inversely proportional to the grain size. And here in this ray, in relation, we can write that the strain rate is inversely proportional to the grain size to the power p. And this p is called as inverse grain size exponent. And we can write the strain rate or combine these two relations in this way, where you can write that strain rate is a sigma to the power n, 1 upon d to the power p exponential of minus q upon kt where n is a stress exponent and p is inverse grain size exponent. And now let's understand the creep rate increases with decrease in grain size, increase in applied stress and increase in temperature. From this relation, we can make these concrete conclusions. So when we want to design a creep resistance material, what we can do is like we want a larger grain sizes now let's look at the generalized form of a creep equation. So you have seen a creep rate relation with respect to stress, grain size and temperature. And here let's get a generalized form. So here we can write this strain rate with respect to stress, with respect to grain size. And here to make it generalized from a material's behavior, what we do is that we normalize the stress using its shear modulus. Also, we normalize this grain size using its purchase weight. So here D takes care of a diffusion based phenomena and D can be written as D naught into exponential of minus Q upon KT. So this D takes care of a diffusion phenomena. This sigma upon G takes care of a dislocation based mechanisms and this d b upon d takes care of a microstructural factors which affects strain rate and that is how we get a generalized form for a creep equation moreover this relation is empirical what are the terms included is mentioned over here so here a is constant which is called as a dawn constant d is a diffusivity of a material b is a virtuous vector sigma is an applied stress and G shear modulus, D is grain size and its stress exponent e is inverse grain size exponent. You can see that this D is at the denominator and that is why it is called as an inverse grain size exponent. K is Boltzmann constant and T is temperature in Kelvin. Here D we can write it as D naught into exponential of minus Q upon K. Q is an activation energy, D naught is a pre exponential factor. This is also called as a Mukherjee bird dawn equation in the literature. And now, based on this relation, we can find out what are the creep mechanisms that are operating during creep deformation. So by this equation, we can find out what are the different operating mechanisms. So we can shuffle this equation in this way and we can write this equation in the form of an equation of a line. We do it this on a log log scale and let's consider T to be constant, it is at constant temperature and grain size to be constant. So we have this term D to be constant. Virtuous vector is constant for a given material. A is also constant here. So this remains a constant term. And we can write this relation that is the strain rate variation with respect to normalized stress. And we can plot this. What we can get is N values. So we get N values in this way. As we go on increasing the stress, we can see that the N value changes. So as I mentioned you earlier, based on N values, we can find out what are different creep mechanisms or dislocation creep mechanisms or diffusion creep mechanisms. We'll be looking at in the next slide. So values of N, that is slope of this plot, indicates what are different operating creep mechanisms. And this equation is applied to all creep mechanisms. That is why this relation becomes an important part in a creep literature. Now let's look what are different creep mechanisms and how this relation or equation is applicable. So we have divided creep mechanisms as diffusion creep and a dislocation creep. So diffusion creep occurs at high temperatures because as we go on increasing the temperature, the diffusion will dominate and thus diffusion creep occurs at high temperatures and low stresses. However, the dislocation creep mechanisms occurs at higher stresses you have dislocation mechanisms or dislocation activities dominating when we apply high stresses. 
In diffusion three, we divided it into two form based on the pathways by which the diffusion occurs. So we have called Nabar varying creep when there is a diffusion occurring through lattice or a volume, and when the diffusion occurs through grain boundary, we call it as Cobel creep. The third mechanism which we saw was a grain boundary sliding. And let's write down this relation, which is a generalized form, and let's see what are the different values of n and p. And which indicates what kind of different creep mechanisms which are operating in a material. So these are values of n, p, and a, which is a dawn constant, and these are the certain conditions and some descriptions. Now let's consider this Navarro varying creep, where n value is one and p value, that is inverse grain size exponent, is two, and the dawn constant is to be 10 to 50. Navarro varying creep occurs at high temperatures, low stress, and large grain sizes. So here we have large grain sizes. That means the grain boundary fractions are lower and thus the diffusion can occur through lattice. Majority of the diffusion occurs through volume or lattice and that is why we call that mechanism as Navarro varying creep. And description is like a volume diffusion here. Now let's look at Cobalt creep. Here the n value is 1 and p value is 3 and dawn constant to be 30 to 50. And we can see that Cobalt creep operates at fine grain sizes, low stresses, and temperature less than Navarro varying creep. So, if temperatures are lower than Navarro varying creep, and we have fine grain sizes, we have a cobalt creep operating in a matter. And this occurs through grain boundary diffusion. Now, for a grain boundary sliding, we have seen the combination of dislocation or a diffusion assisting grain boundary sliding. And here you have a stress exponent of 2 and inverse grain size exponent that is p to be 2 or 3. And it happens at the same range as Navarro and creep or a cobalt creep. And this grain boundary sliding is accompanied by diffusion through lattice or grain boundaries. Now you have dislocation creep mechanisms for which the important point here is the inverse grain size exponent is zero. That means dislocation creep does not depend on the grain size. Rather, the n value it takes is as 3 to 8 and it occurs at high stresses, low temperature than cobalt creep. So the temperature should be lower than the cobalt creep mechanism. And what are the dislocation best creep mechanisms? Those are cross slip climb. We have seen this in detail in our previous class. Now let's write down this relation or specifically for these mechanisms. So here in this case where Navarro varying creep you have sigma upon g that is stress exponent is 1. So Navarro varying creep is directly proportional to sigma and p here that is inverse grain size exponent is 2. Cobalt creep the stress exponent is 1 remains the same as of Navarro varying creep and the inverse grain size exponents comes out to be 3. So here you can say that Navarro herring creep is less dependent on grain size as compared to cobalt creep or cobalt creep is more sensitive on grain sizes as compared to Navarro herring creep. And now when we see dislocation creep here you have p equal to 0 that means dislocation creep is independent of the grain size while the n values comes out to be 3 to 8 and based on these 3 to 8 values we can find out what can be the glide or climb mechanisms which are operating in a dislocation creep. Now let's move on and try to find out or try to represent these mechanisms over a map. Those maps gives you an idea where and which operating parameters will influence which creep mechanisms. So we have this generalized form and we can plot or make these maps using this way sigma upon g versus t upon tm or sigma upon g versus b upon t. Let's consider this map first. So we'll be dealing this map. These are kind of HP maps and we plot sigma upon g on this axis, on this axis. This is nothing but a homologous temperature. Now dislocation glide occurs when sigma upon g is of the value of 10 to 1 minus 2. We know that the theoretical shear strength of a material occurs when sigma upon g is 10 to 1 minus 1. Now let's look at some other lower values of sigma upon g and somewhat other temperatures. So we have seen that the diffusion becomes important when the temperature is more than 0.4 Tm. So let's consider this is a temperature here which is a 0.4 and thus this region represents a creep mechanism and these are sufficiently higher stresses. Here in this region there will be a dislocation creep which is operating. Now let's look at lower stresses. These are very low stresses. This sigma upon g is very small here 
and you can see that this is a higher temperature range and we have seen in our earlier slide when you have higher temperatures and lower stress values you have diffusion creep which is operating so this region or on this map represents a diffusion creep mechanism so cobalt creep which occurs at a lower temperatures and it depends on the grain size of a material and you can see that you have navarro herring creep which is occurring at a sufficiently higher temperatures let's say more than 0.8 tm and what happens in this region the material deforms elastically and this map you can plot it for a specific grain size now if you want to plot a map something like sigma upon g versus b upon t so here we put a temperature constant and we see variation in the grain size and this kind of maps helps us to guide what are the different creep mechanisms operating so if you want less creep deformation what you have to do is like you have to put material at lower stresses and at, at lower temperatures so that material is deformed elastic however to optimize materials uses you can find out what are the contributions of different creep mechanisms using this deformation mechanism and with this i will stop here